Bat Boy is a game I learnt about only recently, but it immediately caught my attention with its retro aesthetic and what appeared to be flexible platforming and action. Now, the developers, they kindly allowed me to get hands on with the opening three levels and give you an initial preview. Gonna say it up front, it surprised me in a good way. So with that, my name's Alex, so this is Switch Corner, let's get started. <laughs> If you enjoyed the video today, consider subscribing, it helps out the channel a huge amount. So the story and here we're playing as Bat Boy, a high school student who loves sports and has a tight-knit group of friends who share that same passion. However, they also have a secret hobby and that is they dress up at night to fight against evil in their town. Now one fateful night, they encounter a mysterious villain named Lord Vicious who brainwashes your friend group and sends them to another dimension. Now Bat Boy must embark on a mission to rescue them by entering a portal that they were taken through. So along this journey, we team up immediately with Garrow, a talking bird who was once under Lord Fisher's control, and he adds basically a dash of humour and this far has taught you the controls along the way. Really curious at this point to see if he becomes part of your repertoire of skills or is he just basically a talking companion. I've enjoyed the setup though and the only issue is there are a few translation quirks this far with the grammar. It's easy to understand what is being said but hopefully they'll iron this out with a quick patch pre-launch. The gameplay in this retro action platformer then is a pleasant surprise, combining elements of Mega Man and Shovel Knight, but I will say in unique ways. This is not necessarily in its level design, but rather the character's abilities and the movement. Now at first glance, the controls may seem familiar with the basic jump and attack skills. Still though, the bat in hand adds a twist, and that is, it allows us to fire projectiles back at our enemies and overcome some basic environmental puzzles. We also use the bat then to bounce off of enemies and objects in the world, making for some fun and creative exploration. The levels are actually scattered with gems to collect and this challenges us to rethink our approach and try new strategies. You know, I learned quickly that killing an enemy isn't always wise if you do want to get everything. Sometimes you'll need to use them as almost something to project yourself off from. This is where it kind of gave me that shovel knight vibe, you know. It's not as maybe complex at times, but or at least this far, but there's a fluid nature to the movement that I really do enjoy on the levels they are designed to maximize this. As for the controls though that is just the beginning because when you beat the brainwashing out of your friends in boss encounters you actually gain a new skill and that's kind of that Mega Man influence I referenced. The first two skills you obtain they are the ability to throw your bat ahead of you which can be used to attack or propel a jump and then there is also a dash attack. I also got introduced to a grappling hook mechanic but that was the very end of my playtime and I only have the option to test it out in a very brief tutorial section. These tutorials are throughout the game and that's a nice touch, it allows you a moment to really understand the new controls. Now if you're thinking I can exploit these overpowered abilities as well, this is really where Batboy has you, you have a stamina system and it allows free uses. Then if you do want to continue using them, you must find stamina regen within the world. So far to do that, you've been collecting it from local plant life. The level design in this game though is impressive, constantly evolving and mixing up the scenarios you face from strategically overcoming locked doors to finding hidden areas. There are moments of verticality and even a few sequences where the game shifts to an auto scroll format where you must outrun it. Going off screen that will lead to your death, now if you die three times you'll be returned to the last checkpoint. Fortunately though I will say these are pretty frequent. Now the variety then of enemies is well done with each type designed to test your fuller skill set from those that say throw projectiles to those with quick attacks and the bosses are also enjoyable although I will admit here I did find some of the core exploration more difficult than the bosses themselves. Now the early boss encounters basically they can easily be attacked with a head bounce maneuver but it is only the beginning and the difficulty appears to be increasing quickly. Basically don't take this as me saying the game is easy I have still died a fair few times. Now let's talk about the game's world map. I haven't seen much of it yet, but it has surprised me in several ways. It appears to be divided into sections and you can choose which level you want to tackle the next from those available, though I will say there is a recommended order as they are numbered. What I found most interesting though was the presence of a few locations where you can spend the gems you collected and also investigate the items you have found. 
To give you some examples though, there's a jukebox that allows you to listen to music, you've got to find the tracks in the world however. There's another that seemed to offer upgrades to the character's health and revives. I also found a character that challenged me to find their missing kittens and they seem to be in some real obscure locations. I'm curious to see how all of this plays out in the full game. I will add here though, unfortunately I didn't have enough gems or items to buy the upgrades I wanted, so I'll have to wait until the full release to give you a more detailed breakdown. So for gameplay this far, I spent about an hour with the game. I played through the three levels twice and I'm really liking what I'm seeing. The difficulty is ramping, the enemies and the level design are interesting, the controls they feel are tight. I also see from the main menu then you can play the game in two ways, a standard story mode and then a speedrun option that drops out all cutscenes. Really like this idea because once I feel I'm at a point where I'm somewhat mastering the controls, I think this will be great fun to jump into. My only concern, this far, three levels in, I know it's not a lot of gameplay, but really, I'm enjoying that gameplay and level design, but I'm still wondering if the game can truly differentiate itself from its influences. I've noticed a few sequences that are extremely similar to Shovel Knight, such as navigating wind currents or bouncing on bombs to progress forwards. But although this isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's clearly going to lead to comparison. However, though, adding a Mega Man style abilities, that could potentially elevate the game to something special. Ultimately, we'll have to wait for the full game to see if it truly sets itself apart, but this far, I am going to go back to what I said at the opening, and I am definitely impressed. Graphically, Bat Boy is a real standout for me. While there are plenty of pixel styled games out there, the chunky look of Bat Boy really caught my eye. There's a clear influence from Shovel Knight again, but Bat Boy himself looks fantastic in motion. While I found some of the hitboxes a tad big, I quickly adjusted to them. The overall animation is well done with attacks and enemies of all shapes and sizes, and the cutscenes mostly consist of in game dialogue boxes and then brief single image scenes. My only minor quibble is that the health meter and collectibles are at the bottom of the screen, which doesn't feel entirely natural, and it may also be a little bit smaller for some players. Overall, though, the graphics they are a real highlight of the game. So the audio is not going to surprise anyone, it's basic retro style effects for dialogue sequences, attacks and so on. The music then is of course of the chip tune of variety and each stage has its own unique theme alongside boss encounter music, or at least that's been the case this far. I have enjoyed what I have heard though and my favourite element has to be the ability to listen to the tracks that you found in the world at the jukebox. Just adds a fun little collectible to hunt down. So overall, three levels in, Bat Boy has my attention, and I do think for platformer fans, it should have yours too. Now, this was a Kickstarter that's coming to fruition. That is always going to be a great thing to see. This said, with its clear influences from games like Shovel Knight and Mega Man, Bat Boy has really wisely chosen to build upon proven concepts. However, it now remains to be seen if the game can maintain its strong start and truly distinguish itself from its inspirations. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in checking out Bat Boy. And with that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.